Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. In today's video, I'm gonna take this country looking dresser and give it a soft glam makeover. I'm gonna be adding new trim, new feet, new hardware, and spraying an all-in-one paint for the first time. So if you wanna see this furniture flip, just keep watching. This is the piece of furniture I'm gonna be flipping today. It is a Bassett chest of drawers. And today's video is sponsored by Dixie Bell Paint Company. So you know what that means. They are gonna be giving away $100 to their website on this video. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel, subscribe to Dixie Bell's channel. And I'm gonna be using their silk all-in-one mineral paint today. So let me know in the comments what color you would like to try. I will pin the winner's comment here next week, so make sure you come and check back to see if you're the winner. My two least favorite parts of this dresser are the hardware and the bottom skirting. It's just really country and fancy, and I want to go for a soft glam modern look on this, so I'm gonna flip this on the back and remove all this trim. This is gonna be different with every piece, but with this piece, it was screwed on, so I just started by removing all those screws and seeing what it looked like after I got everything off. And while this piece is on its back, I'm taking the opportunity to get all those cobwebs off the bottom. Once I got the trim off and assessed what I had here, I went and got a one by five common board from the hardware store and then used my trim pieces to cut as a template for each piece I'm gonna use to replace. Then I cut them all down to size on the miter saw, and I would like to mention that this is the first time using the miter saw by myself, unassisted. I am learning new things. I'm learning to not be scared of power tools. It's a lot easier than you think. Once I got all the boards cut, I just lined them up. I started with the one in the middle first, got it lined up exactly where I wanted it, and then attached it using the screws that I already came with and the existing holes. I use clamps to hold it in place until I get the center screws in, and then I'm able to remove those and put the screws in on the sides. Once I got the front board on, I just repeated the process on both sides. I did run into a small issue. The board I got was not long enough to cover these feet entirely, and I didn't want to get one that was longer than it because then I was going to have to use the table saw. I'm not ready for that. I didn't want to have to cut down a board, so I got this one that was a little bit too short. I'm taping off that primed board to protect it, and then I'm going to use my jigsaw to cut off the excess of the feet. Then I got my sander out and I used an 80 grit sanding pad to make sure this was nice and flush and level. I originally thought I was gonna let this just set on the ground, but I put it to my Instagram viewers and they wanted feet on here. <laughs> so I actually had to cut a different board to be able to get these feet to screw in. If I used the existing support or bracket, I wouldn't have been able to screw into the back of here. So I cut some blocks down to size, drilled a pilot hole into this piece of wood and then screwed it into the base. I'm actually gonna wait to affix these until I paint because I don't wanna have to cover these up. Okay, now that I've got all that structural stuff done, I'm gonna start prepping my piece. I'm gonna remove all this hardware because I don't like it. <laughs> I'm gonna use my Dixie Bud to fill these holes because I definitely have some different ideas for what hardware I wanna use on here. Dixie Mud acts like a wood filler. You can also use it for um, raised stencils and different things like that. It does shrink up when it dries, so you need to overfill your holes when you're doing this. I also filled some gaps that I had in between my boards. I let this dry overnight and then I came in with a 400 grit sandpaper and sanded everything down smooth. 
because these were such large holes, I still needed to do a second filling after I got done sanding them. This can take two to four hours to dry, so I stuck it out in the sun to help that process along, and since I'm not using as much mud, it will dry quicker. So while that's drying, I'm gonna use my Surf Prep Sander with that 400 grit sandpaper to scuff sand my entire piece. Since I'm using the Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint line today, it is recommended to scuff sand your piece and clean it before painting. It's just a different formula than their chalk mineral paint, so it's really easy with my Surf Prep Sander to just quickly scuff up this whole surface. If you don't have an electric sander, you can always do this by hand. I'm going to be using Rad Pads later in this video, and that would be a great option to do as well. I knew I wanted to use single hole knobs on this top portion, so I'm going to go ahead and drill those before I paint because I just like to drill before I paint if I can because I don't like accidentally messing up my paint in any way so it's just safer to drill your holes before if you know where they're gonna go. I didn't know what I wanted to do for the bottom three drawers so I just left those. And then I wiped down all that sand I kicked up scuff sanding and now I'm gonna give it a good cleaning with my Dixie Belle White Lightning which is a TSP soap. So this is gonna help remove any dirt, oil, grease that's gonna help my paint adhere better. And after I clean my piece, I always wipe it and rinse it with some clean water to get all that soap residue off. And now I'm going to take my Dixie Belle Boss in white and I'm just going to prime the sides of my board. These whole boards are primed, so I'm not going to prime the whole thing. I'm just priming the section where I made my cut so I don't get any tan and bleed through. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be spraying my silk paint today. So I'm going to be taping and masking all the sides of my drawers so I can protect them from overspray. Oh my goodness, so much prep and structural work on this piece, but I'm finally ready to paint. So this is the color I'm using today. This is Sandcastle. I'm just having a love affair with beiges right now. It's like my new gray. I can't get away from it. They have two beiges in this line and I'm going to be painting with a little bit of a deeper one just for a more glammed up look. So I'm getting my paint in my paint sprayer canister. I'm going to strain it first and then I'm going to thin it a little bit. Silk, you are not supposed to use water unless you're spraying it and you can only water it it down by about 5% is what they recommend. So that's exactly what I did. I did 16 ounces of paint and two tablespoons of water and just mix that in really well. This is a new paint line to Dixie Belle and I've used it in one other video where I brushed it on. So go check out that video if you have not watched it, but I'm excited to be spraying it today because this is an all in one paint. I'm not gonna have to top coat it. Whenever I am using my spray gun, I always, always test it out in a little box like this just to make sure that I have my spray right and ready to go before I take it to my piece. The particular spray gun that I'm using is a Wagner Flexio 3000 and the nozzle I'm using is a detailed nozzle so it does a really fine spray. It's meant for furniture, it's meant for things that you're wanting to get a really fine finish on. It has different flow settings at the top and for me I typically put do a chalk style paint around a five or a six. And this paint was very similar. I kind of have my settings exactly the same as I do when I do a chalk style paint and it worked out really well. This is only my fourth time spraying paint on a piece of furniture or cabinets. It's getting easier every time I use it. I'm getting a lot more confidence. I used to be totally intimidated about spraying, but I'm having fun trying out a new technique. And this is a great affordable gun for someone who might just wanna try it out. And I don't know, maybe I'll keep spraying and maybe I will upgrade to one of those fancy sprayers one day. I always get the question, do you use more paint when you use a sprayer? And I do. I don't know if that's a typical answer, but I definitely use more paint. And I don't, I mean, partly it's because of overspray, but partly it just puts more paint on. And, you know, after two coats, you have a solid, solid coverage more than you can get with a paintbrush. The prep when I'm spraying takes me a lot longer too because I have to put up my pop-up tent or put plastic up on the walls and you have to mask off the areas that you don't wanna get paint on. But once you actually get painting, it goes so fast and you can get a really super smooth finish. And I learn more and more every time I use it. Um, I still love using a paintbrush, but it's fun to try out other techniques too. You also end up putting on more paint, so I find it takes a longer time for it to dry. I let this first coat dry about four hours before I came in, and I'm going to sand in between my coats to give me a super smooth finish. I'm going to use these Surf Prep Rad Pads. This is the very fine red one. I love that they come in a variety pack, so I have all different grits in there. I'm just lightly sanding this to get out any imperfections, and then I'm going to take a tack cloth and wipe all that dust back. 
I did this all over the whole piece and then I decided to take some dap and just fill in these cracks that I had after I painted it. I could see some cracks in here and I don't like that. I want it to be super smooth and seamless. So I just grabbed some all purpose caulk and caulked in those areas. And once I get it on there, I like to use a wet rag just to smooth it out. This only takes 30 minutes to dry and then it's ready to paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my second coat. And like I mentioned earlier, this is a new paint line to Dixie Belle. It is a all-in-one paint. So it has a built-in top coat, primer, and it even has a water-based stain blocker in it, which worked really well on this because I didn't have any bleed through. And once it cures down in 30 days, it's gonna be water, mildew, and grease resistant. It's gonna be washable and it's gonna have a low reflective finish. It also has really great leveling properties. You can see that this sprayer looks almost like an orange peel when it's wet when you put it on, but as it dries down, it becomes really flat and smooth. Once I picked out my hardware, these feet are just a little bit too yellow and brassy, so I'm gonna spray paint them real quick. I'm gonna grab that medium rad pad and scuff this up a little bit so that my paint will stick. Once I get them all scuffed up, I'm just gonna wipe back that dust and then spray them with a metallic spray paint. It's still gold, but not as brassy as the original feet. I probably wouldn't order these again. I let my second coat dry overnight and now I'm going to get it ready to put on my feet and my new hardware. I got the foot in position and then marked off with a pencil all the holes that are under there. And then I grabbed my drill to do some pilot holes because I wanna be really careful not to crack my base because I would have to completely redo it and that would be bad. So a pilot hole is just drilling in just a little bit to give your screw something to go into. It's gonna help you be able to go slower and not be as aggressive. And then I get the foot back in place and I put the screws in about halfway, get all four of them in and then I go back in and tighten them. one down then I just repeated the process on the other three okay now it's time to install my hardware on my bottom three drawers it took me a long time to decide what I wanted but I finally settled on a really long bar pool for this so I'm having to measure my drawer find the center and then get these on here this is so this is like the thing that I stress out about the most I probably measure about 1700 times make sure they're level and then still right before I put the drill in I have like a mini heart attack um, but everything ended up fine I ended up getting these on and they were nice and level and they actually look Good. So I gained a little confidence with the first one, so then I had to attach the other two. And while I'm working on my drawers, I decided to grab my Big Mama's Butta. This is in Suzanne's Garden, which is a nice floral scent. You guys have seen me use Orange Grove a lot before. This is really great for wooden drawers like this that have a wooden track. You're just gonna rub this on any part that touches the frame and it's gonna help them slide really well and condition the area so they won't be sticky. And it's also gonna make your piece smell good for a couple of weeks. home stretch my last step is to apply these little knobs to my top drawers this is a brand off of amazon called cosmos and it's really affordable and i was really happy with the selection Whew, that was a lot of work and a lot of decisions i had to make but i'm really happy with the final product here it is this is my version of a soft glam is what i like to call it it's so elegant really basic but i love the way the hardware just bumps it up a notch i'm obsessed with these long pulls i have to incorporate them into more furniture and i really love the way the base turned out and I really enjoyed using silk in the sprayer. It is so smooth. I love the way it levels out. I'll definitely be trying that out again. Thanks for joining me for today's furniture flip. Check out some of my other videos before you leave. I will be back next week with another furniture makeover. Thanks for being here and I will see you next time.